listen to the roars from the Irish crowd when Collins comes forward like that. I really feel blessed uh, to have had a very happy childhood. Um, I was born in 1951, the 8th of January. It was the same birthday as Elvis Presley, but in fact uh, Elvis was 16 years older than uh, me at that particular point. But uh, I, I was delighted to have been born in an era pre-television. Uh, television didn't come to Mill Street truly until the early 1960s and it was a really a different world. Um, there was a, a great camaraderie in the streets. The, uh, we found, for example, uh, there'd be lots of people visiting different homes. Homes were opened uh, for everyone. There was a totally different scenario. We had our own um, I suppose, make-believe world in the fair field. Uh, we'd have our own circuses. We, uh, it, it really, you know, there was very, very special uh, scenarios. And of course, we were also very blessed with the uh, education that we got. We, for example, we had the presentation uh, order of nuns here in Mill Street. Uh, it was there we received our very first education. We had a great, great camaraderie in school with all the different friends. And, and I have remained uh, friends with those people all my years and we have uh, had a great bonding. Uh, I think the, uh, they say all friends are best and uh, it was very, very special indeed. Um, th it was also at that time that uh, I began to become interested in the whole world of photography. Uh, I used to visit a family down at the end of uh, Mill Lane or it's now known as Mill View, uh, the O'Sullivan family. And in the porch of their particular home, they had this very beautiful photograph. It was actually a postcard which had been framed of um, the Cum Street in 1910. Now that was later called West End. But what amazed me was that here is an image from that period that you could actually, it's frozen time in that particular period. And when we look at the picture itself, we see all the different people and all the, the lifestyle of the people at the time in this one photograph. You could see the, uh, the transport, the horses in the street. The, you could also see the, the different clothes they wore and so on. And I often had a, an impression that I, what, I, what I'd love to do at, uh, at one particular point would be to step back maybe for five minutes and just observe and then step right back into, <laughs> into our own time again. But if that was possible to, uh, through time travel, uh, it would be just wonderful. But this was the closest to, to going back in time, I thought. And I thought, my goodness, to be able to freeze time like that, uh, it, it is so wonderful to think that um, we could actually, if that inspired me, then I thought, well, the time I'm living in now, if I can take images of that time and freeze that particular period for generations to come. So that's what inspired me to uh, actually begin photography. My very first camera wasn't uh, an actual still camera at all. It was a cine camera because of my uh, involvement with Dublin Cine Club. And uh, I was able to buy a, a five pound cine camera. So, but the films were dearer than the camera. The actual films at that time, you'd only get uh, less than four minutes of film and you had to pay something almost close to 10 pounds. For, 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 for that amount and uh, so you had to be very sparing in your film itself. Later then of course still photography and of course as time went on then and the most wonderful wonderful um, invention of all of course was 
uh, digital photography. My goodness, the uh, the amount of um, uh, actual um, uh, films that I used and had to print them all. Uh, and very often you'd only need maybe 10% uh, of, of, of the prints at that particular point. But when digital photography came about and when you had such amazing uh, aspects as your um, uh, digital uh, memory card, my goodness, to think that you could store up to thousand images in this and then reuse it again. Uh, that was a wonderful, wonderful uh, invention and spared an awful lot of expenses as such. So it has really, really developed over the years. Well, in fact, one of the most historic milestones in the history of Mill Street Museum was the production of Pitcher Mill Street. Now, Pitcher Mill Street itself was actually inspired, in fact, was inspired by Eurovision in many ways because uh, many different people would have come along and uh, visited Mill Street after Eurovision and went to see Noel C. Duggan and the Green Glens Arena and the Duggan family and so on. The rippling effect of Pitcher Mill Street has been amazing altogether. Um, it went all over the world. Uh, it's, it, it, it's in some very famous waiting rooms. Uh, ministers from the government and so on, they have it in their waiting rooms. It's been uh, presented to presidents. Uh, it's, it's, it's now, of course, out of print at this point, but it has become a collector's item itself. Uh, people have got in contact with me from all over the world so, saying how much it meant to them and what a tribute it was that some of their relations were photographed in it. Well, you know, to document the, the happenings of Mill Street, it's uh, been a huge interest to me over the years uh, because I, I think everyone has a great sense of pride in their own place. And in many ways, uh, Mill Street is a microcosm of the whole nation in many ways. So if, if you document uh, about the many different happenings in, in Mill Street, you are, in a sense, documenting what, what actually happens in many towns in, in Ireland itself. It would, of course, be the annual events that we're always delighted to document from Christmas, Christmas period and how Mill Street looks at Christmas. The Mill Street Pipe Band comes along and uh, welcomes the, the new year. We are there always to, to, uh, to record this. And of course, uh, these, there are the annual events, uh, St. Patrick's Day, uh, the Corpus Christi processions. And then of course, there have been the really special events. And of course, I suppose the one that really marks, uh, that put Mill Street on the map due to the fact of uh, the, the great vision of uh, uh, Noel C. Duggan and his family, we had the Eurovision Song Contest 1993. That had a rippling effect and so many other things came because of Eurovision, because people saw the great potential of the Green Glens Arena and the great potential of all the different uh, facilities that were there. You had the very famous uh, um, Chris Eubank, uh, Steve Collins uh, World Boxing, Always the equestrian events, There's the, the, uh, Mill Street is famous for it, the horses of course. When one asks uh, why do we wish to document, we're, we're just, we've really been lucky here in Mill Street. When people come to Mill Street and they, they, uh, they think about here is a, a town with about one and a half thousand people living in it. And yet look at the, the global events that have occurred here. And uh, yeah, it really has been just amazing altogether. I, I feel hugely blessed that I've had the opportunity and the great privilege of teaching here in Mill Street in the Presentation National School in Mill Street and also shared with Mill Street Boys National School, Skullvera. Uh, for 30 years. It was truly very, very emotional uh, when I retired. I retired, uh, uh, three, I'm now in my third year of retirement, and uh, when I retired, my goodness, the, I never realised how much our recording and our, our 
uh, documentation of of our time in in as a teacher in the in the school and in the community was appreciated in such a manner i i i found it hugely emotional and it was a, i it was wonderful wonderful um uh, there was a, a special retirement situation that i shall never ever uh, forget but it's it's been a very active retirement and i feel uh, as long as the good lord uh, allows me health and uh, uh, mobility and so on. Uh, uh, it's it, it's a great privilege and, and a great joy to be to be contributing as part of a team to the local community in whatever way I can.